Before we get into your art, and it is absolutely beautiful, this kind of a big transformation happened for you, what, about seven years ago. Kind of take us through that. Uh, about seven years ago, I started to pursue my dreams and desires to be an artist. And that took a, some significant sacrifice. So it involved a few days sleeping on the blue and green line and stuff like that. So that was seven years ago as I was developing myself and aspiring and growing. What were you doing before that? Before that, I was going to school. I was, I was graduating, but mm -hmm. uh, I knew that I wanted to take my career serious, and uh, it was just gonna have to involve uh, sacrifice, because I didn't have anybody to support me or anything like that, so I right. just had to do what I had to do. Right, the money to get all of this started, and now you've got Demand Justice. This is your latest project. Tell us why this and how you're combining art and activism. Y yeah, so uh, Demand Justice, uh, I just wanted to inspire, provoke, and motivate people. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted uh, to engage them, and uh, kind of push them outside their comfort zone. Yeah, these yeah. are absolutely stunning to look at. What are these made out of? Uh, these are made of wood. So we're looking at layers of wood glued together and painted. Yeah, we How have did you them in even decide here. to come up with this concept in terms of doing your art this way? Um, it's a style I've been developing over the years and just kind of continuously pushing, pushing at kind of the limits. And then this is kind of, uh, this is the growth right here. So these yeah. 12 foot tall structures are like, you know, what I've kind of built towards. And mm -hmm. I'm seeing faces, right? I see someone with glasses and I see, oh, now I see it in the camera, the demand justice. Do you see it, Ryan? Yeah, I see it. Oh, I, I saw didn't it earlier. see it initially. <laughs> Dr. King? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, and, and you're doing this in like pop-up installation style. Correct. Right? Now, why, why'd you choose to do it that way? Um, I wanted to kind of uh, engage a wide audience. I knew that if I put the piece up in some, you know, gallery, it would limit the people that get to experience right. it. Right. And I wanted the average individual to be have access to fine art. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And these pop-ups, they can be anywhere from what, five minutes to forty-five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. What so, happens during the pop-ups? Yeah. So it's something that you just got to kind of catch. Uh, so it could be five, ten minutes to two hours. And sometimes I'm engaging and. Uh, working with other uh, people that are seeking justice in different ways, like mothers that have lost children, or other times I'm working with a dancer who's breakdancing and just yeah. expressing uh, himself in, in that type of way. So right. these are just popping up all throughout Chicago. All right, how important is it to have art and activism kind of, you know, represented together? I think it's it's super, super, super important. Um, I think it's a, it's a way for people to think uh, without thinking. You know, art is like the subconscious influence. Right. So it's a way to really influence and inspire people uh, in, a, in a really important way. So I really think it's integral. I feel like right now is the perfect time for this type of art, considering our current culture. Okay. In terms of demanding justice, you have so much going on in the news right now. Is that kind of the reason Reason why this you feel like it's maybe really taken off because we need some justice right now for sure for sure one of the stops is definitely going to be uh over uh near uh for uh laquan okay. uh, i'm going to be popping up for laquan and uh i also popped up at the police station with some mothers that are also seeking justice for unsolved cases okay so yeah so there's definitely a need for justice right now yeah and, and a lot of big names we mentioned them at the top you've kind of been able to rub elbows with how, how did you meet spike lee uh, Spike Lee is a fan of the work. Uh, oh, my other pieces are all about <clears throat> social justice and you know and that type of thing. So he stumbled across my work uh, with my relationship um, with my brother, Father Mike, and uh, you know he now owns a few of those pieces. Mm -hmm. How long does this take for you to to create that? Um, like the of, images we're seeing now on our screen. Yeah, so these are tons and tons of hours. A lot of my work deals with a lot of detail. So when you look up close, and that's why up close they look like these abstract pieces. Right. But then when you step back, you see this full thing. So tons of uh, hours, uh, I say a couple months, you know, per piece. Wow. Wow. Mm. What's next for you? What can we look forward to? Uh, what you guys can look forward to is just more growth and uh, bigger projects. Um, I, I'm going to be adding more series to my books. And yeah, because you are an author. You've written four books, right? Yeah. Yeah, don't get shy on us. Now tell us <laughs> about the books. Uh, so the books happen to also be uh, around, you know, sort of so social justice mm -hmm. and uh, it's a story of this teddy bear that actually uh, is about uh, Chicago violence and it's told in this uh, through the lens of the teddy bear okay. that is left behind um, after, you know, his friend is no longer there. So it's telling his story and uh, so I have a series with that. Yeah, any plans to go outside of Chicago and try to grow this? 
I, I definitely do. I would love to visit Charlottesville and uh, set up a little bit over there, you know. Um, but uh, right now, I want to focus on Chicago and have an impact in Chicago. Mm -hmm. You're doing great work. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Maxwell, for being here.